Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins on a beach, where we meet our hero Zohan, who is a superhuman Israeli counter-terrorist. He shows off his swag, and grabs the attention of every girl on the beach. He's also shown to be pretty strong, as he dominates all the men during tug of war, and takes it a step further, dragging a bull into the pit. Later, Zohan shows off his cooking and nude dancing skills in front of his babes, but gets interrupted, the army comes to take him away on a mission. It turns out that the terrorist phantom has been spotted in public, so the army wants to apprehend him. Zohan doesn't want to continue his job, because he doesn't like all the unnecessary fighting. Regardless, he accepts the mission much to his dismay. It turns out that Zohan likes styling hair as a hobby. However, his parents don't care for it, and laugh at him for mentioning his passion to them. The next day, he shows off his impressive skills during the mission, as he takes down the enemy soldiers with ease, and is even able to counter gun shots. He eventually finds Phantom, who is somehow able to walk on the ceiling. He runs away and Zohan chases after him in a lengthy scene. The men eventually find themselves in the water, after Zohan thwarts Phantom's escape plans on the jet ski. The terrorist tries to show off his tolerance for pain, by letting a piranha bite him, but Zohan one-ups him, shoving the deadly fish into his privates. The men decide to get down to business, and play tennis with a hand grenade. It eventually explodes and Phantom spots Zohan's underwear, so he believes he's finally killed him. However, this was just an escape plan for Zohan, to run away to America. He smuggles himself into the cargo of an airplane, and has a chat with two dogs, while also giving himself a makeover. With his new look, Zohan enters the city of dreams, and gives himself a new name, Scrappy Coco. He spots a fancy salon owned by Paul Mitchell, so he gets himself some new clothes and enters the salon to get a job. However, he is insulted by the savage stylists, so he walks away showing off some disco moves. Now, he walks off to find another place, where he can make hair silky smooth. On his way, he finds a nerdy boy named Michael, arguing with a businessman over an accident. The businessman acts like a bigot in front of Zohan, so he gives him a thorough thrashing using his legs. After an incredible display of flexibility, Michael asks Zohan if he's bionic, but he says he only likes women. Meanwhile, a Palestinian cabbie named Salim starts to annoy his passengers, with his extra loud phone calls. Zohan spots Salim and seemingly recognizes him, so he uses Michael as a human shield and blocks his view. Now, Michael introduces Zohan to his mom, Gail. She quickly convinces him to take a room for rent, and gets more than what she bargained for, when Zohan gives her some sweet love. Michael doesn't appreciate this sight, but Zohan convinces him to go clubbing with him, once he's done with round two. At the club, Zohan convinces Michael to make his move at a fat girl, after which he hijacks the DJ booth and plays 80s disco music. The audience grooves to his tunes, and then a man named Ori spots Zohan, and identifies him. He tries to make conversation, but Zohan ignores him at first. Ori eventually gets the truth out of him, but cannot believe that Zohan gave up the war, for his passion to cut hair. He invites Zohan to work at his electronic store, and promises that no one will recognize him, especially with his new look. However, Zohan says he wants to become a successful hair stylist. That clearly doesn't seem to work out though, as he ends up attacking wigs, and scaring children wherever he goes. With no other choice, Zohan goes to Ori's store, which is called going out of business, primarily because it's good for business. Ori shoes away a rent agent hired by Grant Walbridge, his landlord. It turns out that rent prices are increasing heavily, but Ori shoes the agent away. Zohan meets him and asks for a job, but he suddenly changes his mind, and reasons that Zohan should follow his dream, because an electronics store is a dream killer. Now, Ori shows him what Phantom has been up to. He's shown to be running a successful Donair business, and also likes to remind everyone how he falsely killed Zohan. Seeing this, our hero decides he will continue with his passion, especially after remembering the time he remotely controlled his own hand to kill an assassin. Zohan goes to a Palestinian salon owner named Delia, and tries to convince her to give him a job. She says the rents are too high for her to pay, so she hires him as a cleaner. Zohan does a lot more than what's required, and ends up disturbing her lead stylist, Claude. This upsets Delia so she gets into an argument with Zohan, but Claude tells them both to get a room, because he can smell a love story brewing here. Zohan ends up learning skills from Claude, while also working as a rash driver during the night. One day, he flirts with a customer and Delia berates him, so he stabs himself with scissors to punish himself. However, the customer doesn't seem to mind his friendly words. The next day, one of Dahlia's stylists quits, so Zohan offers himself as a replacement. She is against this, 
but one of her customers says she wants to get her hair styled by Zohan. Our hero shows off his powers of disco and seduction, as he styles the customer, and his moves catch the attention of the customers waiting in line. He adds value to his services by getting steamy with the customers, and this makes him a big hit at the salon, specifically with the older ladies. Dahlia's business makes so much money, that paying the increased rent is a piece of cake for her, even Paul Mitchell tries to poach Zohan from her, but gets rejected because of his loyalty. One day, Salim argues with his clients and drops them off at the salon, but spots Zohan massaging a customer's shoulder along with Claude. Salim recognizes him as the man who stole his goat, back when they were both fighting the war. This prompts him to call his buddies, Hamdi and Nasi, to tell them about Zohan still being alive. Hamdan and Nasi aren't too keen on fighting him, but Salim wants revenge for his goat. Delia takes Zohan to the park, so that she can thank him for his help. They end up having a good time together, while also talking about the pointless war going on between Palestine and Israel. The next day, Salim sends Nasi to check if Zohan really is who he thinks he is. The plan backfires, as Nasi ends up becoming a fan of Zohan. However, our hero's stick suddenly fails, so he goes to the doctor for help. He is told that his massive bush might be the cause, but later, Gail tells him that it's because he's fallen in love with Delia. Zohan celebrates this revelation by playing football with a cat. Meanwhile, Salim and his buddies try to order a bomb, but their supply helpline isn't currently available. The clueless trio decides to go to a pharmacist to buy liquid nitrogen, but a comedy of errors leads to them buying some medical cream instead. Days later, Grant's agents try to harass Delia, and ask her to relocate her salon, but she says she isn't going anywhere. Zohan admires her determination, and suddenly gets a stiff one. That's when he realizes that he can only make sticky with Delia now. On his way out, Zohan is attacked by Salim, who throws the cream at him, but as expected, it's a wasted effort. Ori feels that someone is out to get Zohan, so our hero decides to join Michael's community watch, to see if there are any bad guys roaming around. During the watch, Zohan spots some hooligans terrorizing the Jewish and Arab shops, so he teaches them a lesson. The next day, Grant scolds his agents, because they aren't able to shoo away the smaller businesses, thus halting his hotel project. He's calm for now, because his wife has the perfect proportions to her body, but he's running out of patience. Eventually, Grant decides to call a racist terrorist group to handle the issue. Some time later, Salim and his buddies go through hoops to finally contact Phantom. He threatens to expose the fact that Zohan is still alive, so Phantom negotiates a deal with him. Salim barely gets anything out of it, but still celebrates his pseudo-victory. Now, Phantom trains hard to get ready for Zohan, and this news reaches America, so our hero decides to expose his true identity to Gale. She happily accepts him for who he is, so he goes to Delia to say the same thing. Unfortunately, she says they can never be together, because of their countries of origin. This breaks Zohan's heart, so he decides to take on Phantom, in order to protect his people. Grant sponsors a hacky sack game for the Jews and the Arabs, and even brings Mariah Carey in for a performance. Phantom is present for this performance, and he goes to meet Mariah later in her room. However, he gets interrupted by Zohan, who challenges him to a fight. After wasting their time making poses at each other, the men have to halt their battle, because Zohan learns that the Jewish and Arab shops have been set on fire. Panic ensues, as everyone reaches their shops, including Phantom, who tries to fight the fire with his punches. He's clearly struggling, so Zohan uses a giant pipe to unleash a giant load of hummus onto the shops. Phantom doesn't understand why his enemy has helped him out here, and challenges him to a fight. However, Zohan refuses to raise his hand, because he's not about this life anymore. That's when Delia shows up, and reveals that she's Phantom's sister, much to everyone's surprise. She finally says that she's in love with Zohan, and it makes Phantom scream in disgust, because he wants the Arabs to hate the Jews. However, Zohan manages to convince everyone to come together and live in peace, with even Salim forgiving him, after learning that his stolen goat was treated like a family member by Zohan. Suddenly, they hear another explosion, and Zohan spots the racist terrorists. It turns out that Grant had sponsored the game as a distraction, so that his goons could destroy the stores, that were getting in the way of his hotel project. Zohan and Phantom decide to work together, to defeat the terrorists, and then we learn that Phantom's true passion is shoes. Zohan bonds with him over this, but the others tell the duo to get to work. Zohan tries on some of Phantom's shoes, while kicking the terrorists down one by one. Meanwhile, a reporter goes to Nasi and the others, who reveal that Grant is the main culprit behind everything. The terrorist leader threatens to blow up some cute puppies, so Zohan and Phantom join their voices, and sing together to create a sonic boom. 
this blows the terrorist leader away, and in a fancy home, where the residents happily adopt the puppies. Now, Grant shows up, but Phantom singing goes too far, and it causes his wife to lose her assets. Grant admits defeat and turns himself in, because he has nothing left to live for anymore. Now, everyone turns the broken down stores into a community-owned mall, where they live in harmony with each other. Zohan's parents come to see him at the new salon, and happily accept Delia, who is now his wife. His dad requests that he cut his hair, which Zohan happily does. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.